This is where waste comes to rest. Mountains of it. Every single day. In most countries, landfills stretch for miles. But Singapore has just one. And by 2035, it'll be full. This isn't where the story begins. In fact, it's the very last stop in something the world calls the waste hierarchy. But it's still a straight line. The real question is, can we bend that line into a circle? Every day, Singapore produces over 18,000 tons of waste. That weighs almost as much as 10,000 cars. Let's see what happens as it moves through the waste hierarchy. It starts with reducing what we put in the bin. The less we throw away, the less strain on the system. Reduce and reuse is very much within our individual control. We can choose to use less, be more efficient, and reuse as much as we can. This gives a second life to a lot of products and services. But in practice, Singapore's consumption keeps going up. So very little waste is stopped here. What does end up being disposed of is picked through for recycling. The challenge is people understanding what can or cannot be recycled and whether the, the recyclables are being contaminated. All this make the recycling uh, a lot less effective. In the end, only 12% of household waste is actually recycled. Everything else slips through the cracks and tumbles down to the next stage. At the Keppel Segers Twas Waste to Energy Plant, fire takes over. At over 800 degrees Celsius, waste is reduced and energy is recovered. Every day, hundreds of trucks arrive here, unloading the waste that couldn't be prevented or recycled. All of that ends up here. From there, giant claws feed the furnaces where waste is burned down until only ash remains. As waste burns, it releases super hot gases, flu and steam, reaching up to 1200 degrees Celsius. The steam spins a turbine, generating electricity. Operating 24-7, Keppel's plant alone can power more than 30,000 four-room HDB flats. When we incinerate waste, we reduce the volume by more than 90%, meaning that less than 10% of the original volume actually goes to the landfill in the form of ash. In the end, one bag in 10 makes its final journey offshore to Samakau Landfill. Incineration is just one part of the solution. On its own, it can't solve everything. Even after reducing the volume of trash, Samakau is projected to be full by 2035. By generating energy from waste, we essentially divert waste from landfill, which releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas. An avoided emission can make a positive climate impact. It also reduces the amount of energy that may need to be generated from fossil fuels. Tomasic's role is to look ahead into the future, supporting companies and technologies that can close the loop, turning what we throw out into resources again. Going forward in time, I think technology will be the key driver. It can change the way waste is being treated and also how do we make the whole waste management infrastructure a lot more sustainable than what it is today. No system is perfect. But circularity gives us the chance to keep resources flowing instead of slipping away. The system only works if we work with it. <laughs>